Today I'm gonna show you how I made this cute witch doll completely from scratch. Hi, it's Val with another episode of Are You Afraid of 90s Craftings? The series in which we are remaking craftings from old magazines. And I'm super excited about today's video. Because we are making the wonderfully wicked Wanda from 1993. I remember <laughs> I used to see a lot those types of plush with the long thin legs back in the days uh, so I was really excited about making my own but I knew it was going to be a challenge because I haven't used a sewing machine for years. The last time it was in 2018 and it was to make my Hocus Pocus costume. So it's been a while and to be honest I was a little bit anxious about that but you know me, I like challenges so I was ready to go. Materials. To make this switch you will need a lot of materials. A beige fabric for the skin, two different types of fabrics for the dress, some black felt for the shoes and the hat, embroidery floss, ribbon, elastics, five buttons, some sewing thread, a spider, something to make the hair, a basic sewing kit, tracing paper and a marker, fabric scissors, a glue gun and glue sticks, a ruler, some polyester fiber fill. You will also need a sewing machine and an iron. With all that, we are now ready to go. 1. Cut the fabric. To know how to cut the fabric, I referred to the pattern section of the magazine. Using tracing paper, I copied the patterns I needed to make the witch, making sure to leave no details behind. It tells you how many pieces you will need to cut and on which fabric. It tells you if you have to cut it on the folded fabric or in reverse. It also has references that indicate where you will need to attach some pieces later on. So all that information is important. Then I roughly cut the fabric circling the pattern. And with an erasable magic pen, I traced down the shapes I needed to cut. And I cut them. I did that for all my pieces. Two, make the witch. This is where I misunderstood the instructions and things got a little bit complicated for me. In the magazine they ask you to sew the seams twice, right sides facing. As I told you my sewing knowledge is pretty limited. Even though I already use patrons before I never had to sew twice. Um, I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> I did some research but nothing made sense to me. So I decided to follow my instinct and do as I thought. With a magic marker I did a line to determine where I needed to sew. I also did that for the arms and legs. When I was done with the first seam, I used wipes to remove the line I did. In the magazine, they ask you to clip curves and corners where needed. So that's what I did. By using scissors, I cut little triangles along the fabric where it was curving. Then I flip my piece around on the right side. I use a pen to help me with that operation. 
Then, using an iron, I flatten my piece completely. After that, I did the second seam the same way I did the first one. And I did that process on all the limbs. Before filling the body, I used the pattern I had to write down some important information, like where the arms will go and where I'm going to attach the legs. Then I was ready to put the fiber fill inside. I was excited to see how it turned out, but the more it was taking shape, the more I realized I made a huge mistake. It was not supposed to look like this at all. You see all that excess skin? It's not supposed to be like this. Uh, it's because of the way I did my second seam. What I think I should have done was sewing two seams side by side on the wrong side of the fabric and then flip it over. It was not that complicated after all, but now it was too late and I was so disappointed. That's when I took that picture that I posted on the community tab, asking you guys if you wanted me to start over or keep going with that result. Everybody told me to keep going, so that's what I did. So I finished filling the body. For the arms and legs, I needed to fill them halfway and sew a seam to create an articulation. After I filled them completely. For the body, I closed it by adding the body base at the bottom. I then placed the legs on the reference I left earlier and sew them. I did the same for the arms. Since I was not really happy with the look of my witch, I decided to make her face more round by adding ears. The one in the magazine doesn't have ears, so I needed to come up with my own pattern. I did the same steps I learned earlier by making the body sewing, clipping curves, and filling. It ended up pretty nice. The witch in the magazine has a couple of warrants. One near the eye, one on the nose, and one on the chin. In the instructions, they tell you to use gems to create those warrants. The problem is, I don't feel they look like warrants. So I decided to come up with my own solution. Using glue, I wrap a pom-pom around the same fabric I used for her skin. Then I stitched it to her chin. To create hair coming out of it, I use a brown embroidery floss. And with some white glue, I fix those hairs to the warrant. The face of the witch in the magazine was made with something called an embroidered face applique, a patch kit you could probably purchase in stores back in the days. The one they used was called Fantastic Face Embroidered Face. I looked online if I could find one of those uh, vintage kits, but not really, so I had no other choice than to do it myself. The first thing I did was to pin down the skin between the nose and the chin because I wanted to put a patch there, so the excess skin was a problem. 
Then, with tracing papers and the magazine next to me, I tried to reproduce the facial features of the witch. When I liked what I did, I cut those pieces and traced them on my fabric. When I was done, I cut them out and finished with the beige thread all around. To fix them up, I bought this sticky paper that allows you to iron patches on clothes. But for a reason I don't know, it was not working. <laughs> it was hideous. So I had no other choice than stitch them myself directly to the doll. In the magazine, they are telling you to apply iridescent paint above and to the outside area of each eye. I don't have iridescent paint, so I mix some blue glitter with some mud patch that I applied on the eyes. At first, I made this big mouth, but I didn't like how it looked, so I decided to make a smaller one similar to what we see in the magazine. And it was so much better. I then made the eyebrows. I also added earrings using small buttons. And I was done with her face. In the magazine, they are using natural fiber for their hair. Uh, they ask you to change the color with purple fabric dye, which seems a lot of work and somehow expensive, so I decided to use something else. I found these blue clear plastic strips on AliExpress that I really like, and at first I wanted to use only that, but when I received it, I was surprised by how small it was. I didn't think I had enough. so. I decided to mix it up with some orange yarn. I took a piece of yarn that I split in two. Then I added five blue hairs to it. With a knot, I attached them together. To make a full head of hair, I needed to do 42 in total. With a marker, I drew dots all over the head where I was planning to glue them. And I finally glued them with hot glue to my doll. I think the result is pretty cool. To make the hands, I simply followed the instructions and used the reference from the pattern. And that's it, my doll was made. Now it was time to dress her up. The dolls you love to hug. A doll kit with your child's face expertly applied by us. 
easy to complete and stuff. Send the following photo headshot 100% full face. Image must be sharp without shadows. We enlarge your photo to fit the doll. Large size school photos are excellent. Create lasting memories with sand expressions. Kids think it's awesome. They just peel off pre-cut shapes from the self-adhesive board and apply colorful sand to create a perfect sand painted picture every time. Mom and Dad love the special family times spent with sand expressions and because it's easy to do, it promotes creativity and reinforces self-esteem for everyone. Crafters love sand expressions sand art products because of the many creative choices available. They are perfect for home decor, gift giving, holiday decorations, original art and more. Everyone loves sand expressions, sand art products, the perfect craft for creating those special memories that last for generations. 3. Make the clothes In the magazine to make the dress, they took a black and a red fabric with really big spots on them. I must admit I'm not a fan, I wanted something more Halloween, so I went with a black fabric with tiny spots on it and with an orange fabric covered with little bats. I started by sewing the bodice front to the bodice back at shoulders. I then assembled the collar. When I was done, I sewed it directly to the bodice. I then created the bodice facing piece. After that, I sewed this piece directly to the collar and the bodice. I think it's there to create a more beautiful finish. Then I close the bodice in the back. For the sleeve, they ask you to gather stitch along the armhole between dots on the pattern. So I use the dots to create a line. I sew the seam directly on that line. And when I was done, I sewed another seam next to that one. When you gather stitch, make sure to leave long threads behind. That way it's way more easier to pull. When I was done, I attached the sleeves to the bodice and I sewed them together. I needed to insert an elastic at the end of the sleeves, so I folded my fabric and sewed two seams side by side. I made sure to leave a small opening so I can pass my elastic through that hole. Now that I'm done with the top of the dress, let's do the bottom part. When I'm sewing like this, I always have a thought for my grandmother. I know the basics because of her. Um, 
because I spent so many hours watching her work on Halloween costumes. At the end of her life, she wanted to teach me how to sew, and she was letting me use her sewing machine. The little I know today is because of her. This project brings me closer to those memories I have of her. I really wonder what she would think of that witch. I finished the dress by gluing three buttons with hot glue. For the broomers, I will go very quickly. I sewed there. And between the legs. And as for the sleeves, I needed to insert an elastic, so I left a tiny hole so I can put an elastic inside. And I did the same for each leg. Four, finishing. We are almost done. We still need to make the shoes and the hat. In the instruction, they ask you to sew a dart on every shoe piece. I cut the pattern where the dart needed to go and I marked my pieces. I then sewed the dart. I then put two shoe pieces together that I sewed together. Then I filled the heel with hot glue. They want you to do that so the shoe keeps its shape. Uh, and once the glue is dry, it becomes hard. I did the same for the tip of the shoe. I also glued a bottom in the center and I stitched a blue ribbon on each side of the shoe. For the hat, I folded the crown in half and sewed it. I then sewed the brim to the bottom of the crown. With my hot gun, I glued the hat to the head of my witch. And I finished by stitching a spider to the hat. version of the wonderfully wicked Wanda from 1993. She is not perfect but with my sewing skill I cannot really do better than this. <laughs> I really like the fabric I used to make her. It's way more Halloween looking than the witch in the magazine and that's what I like about this project. I like the fact that you can personalize your doll as you wish with different types of fabrics, of buttons or of hair and speaking of that I have something to show you.
In the Craft and Things magazine from 1996, I saw four wicked Wanda made by someone. They were made by a grandmother for her grandchildren, and she sent the picture to the magazine. As you can see, all those witches are different from one another, and they are so much fun. You see all the possibilities this crafting offers. It took me a long time to make, but in the end, it turned out great. Let me know what you think about my witch, I'm so curious. Tomorrow, I'll post a survey in the community tab to know what you want to see next, so stay tuned for that. If you like that video, please like, it helps the channel, and of course it makes me happy to know you enjoyed yourself watching my video. If you want to see more, please subscribe. Stay safe and spooky, and I'll see you soon with more Halloween stuff to come. Bye!